A question that has been frequently asked recently on our Telegram channel is basically surrounding the idea of how to earn actual dividends, you know, other than the Ponzi stuff, because drip is very talked on our channel, you know, it's a very hot topic, it's always around whenever somebody uh, or whatever something happens to it, right? And because of this, so many Ponzi's have, you know, emerged and lots of people get involved in them and because they're easy to navigate and they promise something unsustainable so people are you know getting accustomed to this but there are actually lots of ways where you can earn whatever we call real yield so yield the right from a service that people use and then you get a share of it so there are ways and it ranges usually from very simple stuff to more compl complex and complicated things. So today I'm going to take the time to share two protocols that I personally use that do this, but starting from the bottom up. So it's simple to set up, but at the same time, it's something that one should follow up on. And hopefully I will do more videos with more setups or referencing more projects that have more complex things that you should do in. I'm gonna kick this up with the v3 liquidity setup all right so those are two protocols that I use and they highlight two of the native assets on the chain that they are built on so for example Zyberswap is one I talk about a lot so I'm not gonna talk about Zyberswap's update nor I'm gonna reference the price but what I'm gonna discuss how it can help you earn that really yield even though i did already right but i'm just gonna reference it again uh and i'm gonna keep making videos on this protocol as long as it kicks because for me it has been uh, performing really well and they are actually you know always coming up with new stuff they're gonna launch on new chains but again this will be topic for another video so to set up your v v3 liquidity here everything you need to do is even though i mentioned this in my in any of my previous videos is that you come here you connect and then you go to pool and then once you're in pool you have to create a new position now to actually earn v3 fees plus you know uh native asset rewards you can do that by creating either a wrapped eth usdc pair or a wrapped btc uh usdc pair all right and uh, you can also, I think, create USDT, USDC pair, even though that one earns you technically USDC, which is good. But of course, APRs on usually stable pairs like this are not very high, but still. I mean, if you want to just park stables, chill with it, that's an, that's an option as well. So you can create your new position. If you do, you have to, you know, uh, select your tokens, then you select the range. So if you want to familiarize yourself with this, there's a video on this on the channel so you can go check out how this works entirely. So you select the range from which one asset's price is priced versus the other and then you enter how much you want to uh, put in that liquidity pair and boom, you have that set up and then you start earning fees. One, once this is displayed here, you click on it and it will show you how much you're earning in both. And if you want to stake it, you can go to farm, manual farm, and then uh, you can come here. The three farms should be displayed right now very shortly. Okay, the loading page is not... Okay, here they are. So you have to... You, so you can click here. It's going to show up as a button called farm. You click on farm and then you can enter uh, your LPs in. All right, so very simple. And if you really want to know how much this pool is doing in that retrospect, you can go ahead to Zyberswap's analytics, where you can access here more analytics, and then you choose pairs, and it shows you how much there is in terms of liquidity versus the volume that the pair is doing. So you can clearly see that by far, this pair, ETHUSDC, is doing the most in terms of fees for everyone who puts liquidity in it, right? So a quick ratio shows you that the volume to liquidity ratio is about three to four uh in terms of absolute numbers so between three and four i think it's like 3.4 3.5 or something that's a lot and usually what you get is a number below one for protocols like uniswap and that 
pushes me to the idea of if I go to DeFi Llama right now and check the whole ratio of volume to DVL for uh, Zyberswap, it's 2.3. So it's above 2, but that, keep in mind that this ratios the whole set of pairs versus the volume that the protocol is doing. If you want to know more details about your pair, it's better to come here because if I want to put it USDC my, for my pair, the volume to liquidity ratio is higher than the average. All right. So the whole thing. And that is what matters, uh, what matters at the end of the day. And you can clearly see all the pairs. If you want to put another stuff, you can do that. But those three pairs, those you can put in the farm as well. So you're not only earning fees, you're also earning farm. Uh, farmable rewards on top that's an arbitrum right if you want to do something on bsc which is something that i use as well you can go and leverage pancake swap similar setup you set up your range and then you also you can put this in the farm of that train of that pair excuse me and then you can earn also cake rewards on top of the fees that it does earn you and again if you want to understand each pair in regards to volume to TVL, here is what it is. You can come here. If you click here, info, click on pairs. It shows you, for example, by far the USDT to wrap BNB pair is doing the most in terms of volume to TVL, which is if you ratio it up, it's above one, right? But if you go on DeFi Llama and check, uh, and check the average, it's 0.31. So you cannot really tell from that metric. It's better for you to go check the volume to TVL ratio of the pair you want to leverage, all right? So by far, this one is the best, and this is the one I use. You get fees from, I mean, you get uh, yield from trading fees, plus you get yield from cake when you stake it. I'm not going to talk APRs because it depends, right? So it depends on the ratio setup, so the tighter, the more, and then it depends on the swings in the market because your dynamic APR can jump very quickly, all right? Very, it can go very high and it can drop very low. But honestly, I think so far in regards to cyber swaps, if you add DC, I'm averaging about between 140 to 150% APR. And that's very impressive, right? Like, I don't know if there's anywhere on any, uh, on any chain in regards to native ETH chains uh, a protocol that is giving you that much on ETH USDC. I'm not sure. Maybe there is, but that's my experience. And BNB USDT, it varies, right? So usually I try to widen the range a bit, but of course, if you go, I don't know, a range worth eight bucks, five to eight bucks, you can jump really high. But again, all of this is nice, right? And you can, on top of this, you can check the dex to sex uh, spot trading volume and you can clearly see that it's in a large uptrend all right so it's growing overall but again all of this is really cool but please understand the risks please understand that even though in theory you are making good money using real yield in v3 there are a few risks that you should know of because even though the numbers on paper look cool but the reality is you could actually be losing money. And here's what I mean. So one of the most apparent risks that I'm going to, you know, uh, name here is the impermanent loss risk, which is, in my opinion, or at least for me, it's not really a risk because I do want to hold BNB and ETH. So if that were to happen and understanding V3, uh, you should really grasp the idea of if and only if the price of one of these assets drops at the bottom range, right? At the bottom range of the uh, of the range you set up in, then you get everything in either BNB or ETH. So the price of your asset has dropped, depreciated. So you get the whole thing in BNB or ETH, for example. But then in order to repair, if you don't have excess capital in a stable coin, you're going to have to realize some of this loss and then you're going to have to basically sell half of it and then repair again. So in reality, you did lose money because you realized the loss on the asset that has depreciated. So, yeah, there's this risk. All right. So if you can circumvent this or if you're OK with taking the impermanent loss uh, in a short term time frame, then it's okay, all right? So just keep that in mind. So you might be losing some money in the short term. 
and that ties in with the sudden price swings factor meaning if for example i have bnb set up between 300 and 310 if that jumps suddenly to 320 sure i made some money from the lp but at the end of the day i'm gonna get the whole thing in a stable coin and then i'm gonna have to rebuy bnb at a higher price to repair again and if bnb drops back down i lost money so you get the idea so sudden price swings is also not really good because you're gonna have to buy in the assets or the assets sorry at either a higher price or you're gonna have to sell it at a lower price at the lower end so it's not really cool and uh, again short term if you're okay with these things then you should be fine but keep in mind that these things exist so sometimes when you look at your por portfolio you're like oh, shit but i lost money but again this is just money on paper whatever you realize you should immediately convert it into something else to understand that that's how much money i made and that's my lp value all right and the pool dilution okay it's there it's not really a risk it's just you to understand that if more people come in means you're gonna get less uh yield in, at the end of the day if the volume doesn't rack up for example because it's like having a cake that is designed for eight people but then if 10 people want to have a piece then your share will be less it's just there to for you to understand that you cannot really always take these numbers for granted they could change at any moment at any time and with that i'm gonna conclude the video here i just wanted to share two ways to actually earn yield on blue chip assets like eth and bnb now again if you're not one who wants to hold these assets perhaps this is not the play for you if you want to learn more about these things you can actually text me directly or on the group or whatever doesn't matter you can reach out all right but understanding that there are actually several ways on all of these chains that we can use to earn yields without uh you know being part of any ponzi scheme is something that people should be aware of all right it's it's very good exposure it's very good to get the message out there all right so these things exist and there are many complicated ways and many other simple ways to earn that yield whatever i shared is just the tip of the iceberg it's the tip of the tip of the iceberg it's nothing it's just two examples that i personally use but there are so many more perhaps i'll do more on other stuff but these protocols regardless of the native assets performance because that's not what really matters here are there to give us opportunities and then it's up to us to use these opportunities or to just nag and complain about the price of these assets and not really understand how we can use them to actually make yield at the end, all right? And that's the goal. So I really thank you if you stuck around till the end. I hope I brought you some value with this. See you on the next one. Have a good one.